You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. There is a report from 97-1, the ticket in Detroit, um, that the, uh, it's Rico Beard is the on-air um, uh, personality's name. Mel Tucker, the headline, Mel Tucker to sign a long-term extension with MSU, quote, Ryan Day money. Ryan Day, of course, being the Ohio State head coach who makes north of $8 million a year. So uh, the lead is Mel Tucker isn't going anywhere. Amid rumors that Michigan State's football coach could bolt to LSU, Rico Beard reported Thursday on 97 won the ticket. It appears Tucker is signing a long-term extension with the Spartans that could pay him up to $8 million per year. Quote, I have sources who said it appears that Mel Tucker is going to be getting a contract extension with money around $6.8 to $7.8 million per year with escalators and bonuses that could take him up even higher. Adding the news is, quote, unconfirmed. So that's, again, the report from 97 won the ticket. Unconfirmed, uh, Michigan State and Rico and uh, Mel Tucker according to Rico Beard, saying that uh, they're nearing an extension to keep Mel Tucker in East Lansing. A uh, couple of things. Uh, number one, if there's a lot of people who are texting, all right, so what does that mean if Mel Tucker is extending with Michigan State? The entire time that we've all had conversations about Mel Tucker, there's been one objection that I've heard from the Mel Tucker side of things, which is he's moved a lot and may not be ready to leave Michigan State this quickly. Uh, after being in Georgia, he was at Colorado for less than a year. He was there for less than a calendar year. And then he took, he went from Colorado for one year and took the Michigan State job. And that's been, it's been less than two years now because he took that job in February of 2020, just before COVID hit. So you're talking about less than three, uh, in less than a three year span, having gone from Georgia to Colorado to Michigan State, would he leave again? That was the one, the one hang up. It had been expressed to me that if LSU were to offer Mel Tucker the job, that he would accept it. So I'll have a little bit of wait and see with this news. Um, I tell you often, consider the source. And it's not to say that the guy who does radio in Detroit doesn't have insight into what's going on there in East Lansing. Um but there are people who cover the sport of college football far more closely that typically have insight into deals like this and how and when they get done. So until we hear a report like that from a Ross Dellinger, from a Bruce Feldman, from a Pat Forty, from someone who covers the sport and breaks news around the sport, I think it's fair to have a little bit of a, um, of a skeptical point of view. I mean, I'll remind you there are there were people that reported Marcus Freeman was going to be LSU's defensive coordinator. That didn't happen. In 10 years ago, there were people that reported that LSU, that Les Miles was going to Michigan and Bo Pelini was going to be LSU's head coach. That didn't happen. So you tread carefully, and the thing that I tell you often is consider the source and understand where information is coming from. I don't know this person who does radio in Detroit to know whether or not that's reputable at all. What I don't mind saying is, the information that I've gotten throughout this process is that LSU has keen interest in Mel Tucker and that if they were to offer him the job, he would take it so much so that they were even discussing which guys on staff would be retained and who might have to interview for a job, et cetera. So um, maybe Mel Tucker has gotten to the point where he's made a decision to stay in East Lansing. I'll wait till I get that from a more reputable source or multiple uh, reporters who are report who are breaking that news. And if, in fact, Mel Tucker does stay in East Lansing, the very obvious next question is, what does that mean for LSU if Mel Tucker is scratched off the list? Uh, Jimbo Fisher, as I think everybody has said and understands, remains the guy that is the primary target for Scott Woodward. And maybe the zeroing in on Jimbo has caused Mel Tucker to stay in East Lansing. Maybe. That's speculative on my part, admittedly. But... Maybe that's the that's the target for LSU that they're zeroing in on, and Mel Tucker decided, well, I'll just I got a bird in hand, take it. Uh, the Jimbo thing is complex because of how the season may end for Texas A and M, uh, and meaning 
if Alabama loses again and Texas A&M wins out, they're in the SEC championship game. And it is nearly impossible to imagine Jimbo leaving Texas A&M if he's got his team in the SEC championship game, especially with the time frame that LSU is working on. If they really want to make this higher within 48 hours after the end of, of LSU's regular season, 48 hours after the A&M game on November the 27th, then you wouldn't wait through championship week. Maybe you wait a week if it's to get the guy you want, but realistically, if the guy you want is coaching in championship week, probably not going to be able to hire him unless it's Billy Napier. I mean, Napier could be coaching ULL in a Sunbelt championship, but again, I'll maintain I don't think that's the guy. Um, I don't think LSU gets that far down its list, but perhaps, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, we've... you. You never, you try never to speak in absolutes when you talk about coaching searches, because uh, it's never done till it's done. I mean, LSU had an agreement in principle with Kevin O'Sullivan to be the baseball coach, and that didn't happen. They had an agreement in principle in 2015 with Jimbo Fisher to be the football coach, and that didn't happen. And with Tom Herman in 2016, and that didn't happen. So you wait until things like this play out all the way through, through the finish line. The other name that's popped up today is Lincoln Riley, and. I'll tell you, the Lincoln Riley's name was first. I first heard someone mention that to me as sort of a, you know, an ace in the hole that Scott Woodward may have had uh, a couple of weeks ago. But it's it has become, in my my observation, less and less likely through conversations over the last couple of weeks. And the world melted yesterday. The world around here, anywhere, the internet melted because there was a plane that left Norman for Baton Rouge, Norman, Oklahoma for Baton Rouge. And people freaked out and wondered, you know, is that LSU? Is that are they going to to talk to um you know are they going to uh are they going to talk to to Lincoln Riley? And the point that I've made in a lot of different platforms I'll make again here is at let me answer your question with a question. Why would Scott Woodward or anyone affiliated with LSU get on an LSU plane and fly to Norman, Oklahoma on game week when eighth-ranked and undefeated Oklahoma is preparing to play number 13 Baylor in Waco? A team that's very much on a championship trajectory this year. Why would that guy take time away from game prep to interview for another job right under the noses of his current bosses. It, it makes no sense at all. Well, lo and behold, we found out who actually was on that plane, and it was Chris Sadler. If you're not familiar with who Chris Sadler is, and he's essentially confirmed this on Twitter, um, he posted a picture from, from the plane with his Shizu, and he said, Sassy, the Shizu, is guilty as well. Um, Chris Sadler is a Baton Rouge businessman who owned at one point all of the Cracker Barrel convenience stores. Several years ago, he sold out of them. And as I understand it, has an investment group now or something along those lines, who his daughter goes to Oklahoma and ha has a, a place there, as I understand it, from some Oklahoma reporters and was there visiting his daughter and then flew back to Baton Rouge where he resides. That's what the flight was. It was not, it was not Scott Woodward going to talk to Lincoln Riley. Um, but the silly season is upon us, so uh, rumors abound, and we'll all wait and see how it sorts out to see what exactly is fact and what is fiction and what is just internet fodder. But uh, the thing that we're watching right now is there is a report that Mel Tucker from a, a Detroit radio station that Mel Tucker is uh, close to an agreement to extend and stay, his, uh, extend his contract, get a raise, and stay in East Lansing. We'll keep you posted if we hear anything else on that. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.